Hello everyone, this is Warren Blade, bringing you another knife fight between the ZT-909 and the Benchmade Adamas. Comparing these knives is kind of like comparing pickup trucks. It's essentially a Ford and Chevy in a lot of ways. You have your Benchmade fans, and you have your ZT fans. And everyone has an opinion on which one is better, which is why we do these videos. So I'm going to get to the tail of the tape for these knives, starting with the ZT. The 909 has a 3.8 inch S30VN blade. It's a drop point. It is 0.156 inch thick. The knife is 8.5 inches overall. And when it's closed, it's 4.75 inches. The total weight of the knife is 7.5 ounces, and the cost is $180. Here, 909, Les George design. Then we have the Benchmade Adamas, or the Benchmade 275. They also make an automatic version of this knife, which is a little different. The Benchmade Adamas has a 3.82 inch D2 drop point blade. It's coated with a black coating. It is 0 0.160 inch thick. The knife is 8.7 inches overall. And when closed, it is 4.88 inches and weighs 7.68 ounces. The Benchmade Adamus sells for $195.50, up from when I bought it way back in 2013 for $132. Basically, today we're going to have what I call the Battle of the Bricks. These knives are your quintessential folding pocket bricks, as people derisively call very large tactical folders, and they're very similar in that regard. As I said earlier, it's a Ford and Chevy comparison, essentially, if you're comparing pickup trucks or throw Dodge in there, if Dodge is, you know, what floats your boat. All right, so we have the blades. In terms of blade thickness, Benchmade wins. It's slightly thicker. If we look at that thickness here compared to, say, a brand new penny, It's about as thick as almost three pennies. Your ZT isn't much thinner. It's a little thinner toward the point, but not a whole lot. They're both thick knives. They both have a similar grind too, where you have this little flat and this little flat. Although Benchmade is, in my opinion, more stylish with that fuller that Shane Siebert likes to put in his knives. So for blade thickness, that's going to go to Benchmade. Blade steel corrosion resistance, that's going to go to ZT with S35VN. It's a very corrosion resistant steel. They didn't feel the need to put a coating on it either, so you can see the blade. I much prefer to be able to see steel when I buy steel. It's part of the charm of buying these knives that are S35VN or LMAX or... M390 or even M4 if it's not coated, which I'm guessing you almost never see, but I like seeing steel. Whereas with Benchmade, they use D2. Granted, this is an older design. This knife debuted in 2011, which the knife yours is like 50 years ago. <laughs> D2 is one of my least favorite steels. I really don't care for D2. I like the Adamus enough that I bought the knife, but I find D2 is very hard to work with, which is where Ease of sharpening comes in, and that's a definite win for S35VN. I've actually never sharpened this knife, although I've had it for about four years. And I imagine when it comes time to do so, it's going to be a real chore to do that with the D2. Going to the action. Lock strength. The axis lock, I'm going to give the point to here. Axis locks are very strong. The only weakness is there are little springs in here called omega springs. They're shaped like the Greek letter omega or similar to the English letter U. If those little springs break, you're sending your knife back to Benchmade for service, which is kind of a downer because then you're out of knife. 
In terms of your liner lock mechanism on the ZT, it's a relatively thick liner lock, as the liners on this knife are very thick. It's about as thick as an American nickel. Not going to break through most normal use and would probably hold up to quite a lot of punishment before it does go. Now we go to pivot movement and ease of adjustment. The ZT is on a ball bearing pivot, which is very smooth. The only thing about the ball bearing pivot on this knife is if it dries out or gets clogged with lint, it will basically clog the knife to the point where you only can flick this open to about here. Benchmade has phosphor bronze washers in their pivot. It's also a little easier to adjust with your hex key here versus having to buy some kind of bit or what do you call them, those little things that you have with a, a wrench to take that off. So I'm going to give the pivoties of movement and adjustment to Benchmade based on the adjustment factor, although ZT's pivot technically is quicker because of the ball bearings. Ease of closing the lock. Well, that really depends on who you are. Some people really love the axis lock, if you can do what I'm doing now, which is flicking your knife and then either using some force to get that to go in or having to finish it up with this one. Or you have a ZT knife like this where you just close a liner. I would say ease of closing lock goes to ZT only because I think most people are familiar with your more basic liner lock. It's more intuitive than the axis lock, although the axis lock does make it quite easy to close the knife. All right, method of opening durability. I threw this one in here because I have broken thumb studs off of knives, mainly because they just they rotate loose and fall off. I don't think you're going to have to worry about that with the Adamus. It's a very durable design and Benchmade has these so that they're really not going anywhere although you can see if you look very closely in there little Torx holes. ZT is the flipper it's part of the blade unless you crack the blade in which case your knife is probably ruined anyway and you're gonna send it in to get rebladed for around 30 to 35 dollars from ZT you're not gonna crack that flipper off. So while I'd say thumb studs are durable, a flipper being part of the blade is going to win that every time. As far as method of opening and speed terms, should you need a quick tactical deployment, the flipper is going to smoke the thumb studs. I like thumb studs. There are some flippers I'm not crazy about. The ZT909 is not one of them. It's a very well-designed flipper. It's a large flipper tab with jimping on it so you can catch it kind of like if you were catching the jimping on the hammer of a revolver very well designed flipper opens very quickly point ct in terms of handle liner thickness as we move on to the handle category zt's liners are slightly thicker than benchmates which considering the fact that the zt is a liner lock it's good to see that it's also important to note that Benchmade skeletonized their liners, which if they did not do that, this knife would be even heavier than it already is at over 7 ounces. The ZT, on the other hand, has full steel liners, which are really pretty if you can see in there. And see how they're almost a mirror finish on the inside of that knife. I'm going to give liner thickness to ZT. Strength of handle design overall. Both very strong knives. You could probably run these over with a pickup truck or a car and they'd be okay. I'd say a semi is pushing it. That would probably crush most knives. Well, I'm going to give that point to Benchmade. They have a G10 backspacer here. And normally I'm not as crazy about backspacers as opposed to standoffs. But this is a very well-made backspacer. It doesn't catch the blade at all when you shut the knife and it just it makes it really strong i think in some ways g10 is actually stronger than steel so we're going to give that to benchmade going to traction of g10 in terms of like if you were holding this knife in wet conditions zt has little oval kind of shapes and they've milled a ton of them into this handle 
This handle is actually the second generation for the 909. The original model was slightly different and more aggressive in where they cut these kind of angled cuts here. And I think this is a much nicer and much more usable handle. He kind of uh, kept it simple in his design versus being really elaborate like some G10 handles can be. Benchmade has done a good job too. It's got a very interesting texture. This isn't actually polished flat. There's little bits of G10 here where you can feel it. It's almost like a very lightly textured leather. And then, of course, they put the cuts in here. So it's also a good handle. A little slipperier than the 909 is. So I'm going to give that to ZT. Carry clip durability. It's important to have a durable carry clip. I know Emerson makes some of the best on the market. Benchmade has some decent ones. The only thing I don't like about Benchmade clips is they'll show every little bit of wear, which in some knives can be sexy, but in Benchmades, they tend to put this kind of black paint on it. It just looks cheap, though they will send you a new clip if you request one. Don't abuse it, people, please. ZT is the same way about sending you free clips. Once again, please don't abuse the system. They were actually nice enough to send me new screws here when I transitioned that clip from right-handed to left-handed and something in the handle stripped the screws a little bit. This particular clip on ZT is very similar to the Benchmade design. They're almost identical in that they attach and then loop and they're both deep carry clips. The only major difference is the ZT is a parkerized clip. I'm going to give this point to Benchmade though because I think their clip is a little wider and I've beat on this knife with that clip and it hasn't had a problem so I'll just it's almost a toss up I'll give it to Benchmade. Last one carry clip concealment. These are both deep carry knives. If you envision the pocket line as being roughly where these clips end you can see that about maybe say half an inch will stick out with your ZT and with your Benchmade it's a little less although this is an angled design. I'm going to give carry clip concealment to Benchmade however because when you stick that Adamus in your pocket for a knife that's huge like this you really don't see a whole lot other than just this that top part here that would be sticking out of your pocket. So that's a point, Z, uh, point Benchmade excuse me although ZT is very well made. In terms of totals, to see who won this fight, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 for ZT, and I have 6 for Benchmade. It's a very close round. They're both awesome knives. I'd say the ZT has some design edges on the Benchmade in terms of being quicker to open because it's a flipper and just having a more tractable G10 handle. Benchmade, however, has just a brute of a blade on here, and you can just see how thick this thing really is at the pivot. So for you fans of the Adamus, it's going to continue much longer, and I really hope that Benchmade considers making another edition of the Adamus with possibly a different steel. I'd love to see it at M390 without this black coating. I think it would be a gorgeous knife, maybe if they did carbon fiber instead of G10. Just make it something beautiful. That would be awesome to see. And same thing with ZT. I mean, this is the only model of the 909. I'm sure they could soup one up and sell it too, and it would be interesting also from ZT. But for now, we have the winner, which is the 909, and the almost winner, the Benchmade Adamus. Two awesome pocket bricks. Thanks for watching. I know this was a long one. Feel free to put your opinions in the comments. And if you did happen to deploy with a Benchmade Adamus, I'd love to hear about it. I know they gave a bunch of those to the military, and they donate a portion of the profits to the Shane Siebert uh, Ranger Assistance Foundation when they sell a Benchmade Adamus. Just another reason to pick one up. Once again, thanks for watching, and have a nice day.